wish you would. I wish you would, bro. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I land back in the U.S. and I'm immediately presented with a uh, headline from CNN, the place where, uh, you know, articles go to die. Um, that's fair. In fairness, they all do. They're all, they're all shit awful. I, every now and then I see some people really taking it to CNN and uh, I'm like, yeah, it sucks. But, um, you know, Fox also sucks. MSNBC sucks. They all suck. Sorry. Everything is awful. Anyway, the headline in CNN is basically talking about heat. In this case, they're talking about wrestling heat, where uh, characters are developed in order to generate anger. And I got to thinking, this has a crossover into comics for sure, because a lot of the behavior of some comic creators in public is much like a uh, professional wrestler character. They've got, they're trying to develop a persona designed to get attention or, you know, a, a prevent boredom. I have no idea. But anyway, that's, that's what they're doing. So, but, but the interesting part uh, that I found is CNN is doing this article really to, uh, the, the purpose of this, this article is to say Republicans are dangerous assholes. That's the, that, it's never said in the article, but that's the purpose of it. And wait, you may believe that or you may not, but you know, you should also deal with facts. So this article is, is basically says two pro wrestlers developed the progressive liberal to be the bad guy at matches. Then the atmosphere turned far darker. So basically what happened here is um, this guy, what is it? Bo James uh, has been wrestling since the late eighties. So, you know, the crux of the, of this guy's initial wrestling career came during the nineties, which was the attitude era, which was, you know, ECW and Philly wrestling and extreme and uh, DX and the NWO and kind of that, that era of wrestling. And that's important little piece to note in all this. So basically, uh, wrestling in the South, I think the Appalachian Wrestling uh, League, which I am not familiar with, but basically it, um, it, which is surprising. I thought I was familiar with more things with wrestling. But anyway, it, it basically tour Southern states and they do, you know, small wrestling shows. And this guy creates the progressive liberal character. And apparently put images of Hillary Clinton all over his tights. And then he would come out saying things like, I'm going to take your guns and, you know, uh, trans rights, I guess. I don't know. I, who knows uh, what, what he does to kind of get the crowd all worked up that he's a, he's a liberal in a deep red, you know, territory. And then I guess when Biden, um, you know, uh, won, uh, started putting images of Biden all over his trunks. So now he, he walks around with Biden on his crotch. Uh, fine. But, uh, but here's the, uh, the, the kicker is the article is basically saying, you know, this was just a gimmick designed to, you know, rile up the crowd. It's fun to rile up the crowd, but now the crowd really hates him and it's, it's gotten dangerous. So he talks about how I had rocks thrown at me. A lady pulled out a lighter, tried to light my trunks on fire while they were on me and had someone else pull out a switchblade. So, uh, anyway, he, he kind of goes into the creation of the, uh, character, which was basically, um, hey, um, you know, the crowd seem pretty right wing. So if I want to be a bad guy, I come out as somebody who's left wing, I insult their politics and then that will generate some anger toward me. And there you go. And so he says, they entertained, he goes, one time a fan flashed a nine millimeter handgun on his hip and told him, come and take it. Uh, but, uh, you know, basically talked about crowds get invested and everything else. And then in 2022, he replaced the Hillary trunks with a pair saying riding with Biden on his butt. Okay. Uh, but he says the audience has changed. The last five years, mysteriously, since Trump appeared on the scene, it's gotten out of hand. People become more frustrated, more divided. And that uh, progressive liberal character is a, is a mark for, for violence. So, um, that, okay, so, so here's the problem I have with this entire kind of article and character and, and the guy who's wrestling, which I don't know, but the guy who's wrestling as his character. First off, if you are at all familiar with wrestling in the 90s, particularly things like ECW, you'll know that uh, there have been, you know, in wrestling, people have 
fans have stabbed people. People, there's a very famous scene of fans throwing chairs into a ring, like dozens and dozens of dozens of chairs on top of wrestlers. There is, uh, you know, there's been people get out of hand. There's been in the WWE, even, you know, a couple of years ago, there were still instances of fans charging the ring, sliding inside and like attacking the bad guy. Th- this is not new and it has nothing to do with politics. Wrestling fans have lost their shit and gone after people for a long time. It's very, in, it's in the nature of wrestling. So what I don't like about the article is this, um, hey, we, what we want to do is we really want to say that, that Republicans have become a bunch of assholes. Sure, you're, you're welcome to make that case all day long. I think uh, the hardcore Republicans and the hardcore Democrats are assholes and fuck them all. But that's just me. It doesn't have to be you. Um, but it's like every, every now and then I say something like that and people come in like, yeah, but this one side is worse. And it's like you're kind of asking me to drink a full glass of poison or three quarters of a glass of poison. I would prefer to drink no poison. That's that's where I'm coming from. That's that's my general uh, perspective in, in all this. Uh, but it, it th- th- to say that now it's suddenly gotten dangerous, that fans are suddenly uh, leaning too much into the heat of the character and they're taking it seriously and, and there's some danger to it, is just a bullshit lie. There have been plenty and plenty of instances and lots of articles and lots of reports and documentaries about villains, I mean, Jake the Snake used to get a bunch of uh, angry heat. Bad News Brown used to get a bunch of racist heat years and years and years ago. This is not new. I think, uh, I do believe at one point somebody either threw a punch or, or stabbed Roddy Roddy Piper. Uh, there, there's been, you know, Ted DiBiase, he's had people take a punch at him. You know, lots of stuff over the years has gone on. So that's not to say those things are right. It's to say that to to claim that this is new, that suddenly, thanks to, uh, I don't know, tensions in politics that I got to say CNN and Fox and these kind of places help encourage just for what it's worth. But to say that this is now creating this this uh, situation of danger for heels is ridiculous. It's always been there. It this is this is not new. People have been batshit crazy for a long time, as it turns out. How does this relate to comics? Well, Comic creators, some of them, and I'll I'll throw one guy as an example. Mark Brooks, for example, enjoys playing a heel character. What I mean by that, and yet, you know, he probably doesn't see himself necessarily as a heel, but he definitely sees himself as an antagonist. Just as a name from, uh, you know, some time ago, I don't even know if the person's still active, Rinfamous would brag about, "I'm, uh, I'm getting heat. From other people. I remember Bleeding Cool did some kind of article at one point on Rymphamous saying, you know, it's she's the sin eater. She's uh, basically, uh, you know, ca- taking the hate away from these angry trolls so that the comic creators can live in peace. It's kind of this very bizarre take. I, I just, I, I could never wrap my head around what the fuck's going on there. But, but anyway, uh, people who go out and they intentionally antagonize, whether it's people like that or, for the matter, on the other end, when uh, Van Skyver goes on Twitter and starts mocking somebody and 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 taunting them or or you know jerking them around, um, you know people are going to come at him. To suddenly you know act you know if you play a heel, if you play a sarcastic you know person, you play a troll, whatever it happens to be, if if you take that approach in your in your posts or your tweets whatever else. It's disingenuous to suddenly turn around and go, why are people, uh, why are people angry about all this? What, what, you know, I, it is, it, when, when Brooks would, uh, post stuff like I'm being attacked or, or Heather Anto's done the same thing. Hey, come on that. Yes. Yes, you are. Because you decided in the terms of wrestling to wake up one morning, put on your costume and be a heel. That's what you did. You didn't come out to be, you know, good guy, Bret Hart. You came out to be bad guy, you know, hail Canada, America sucks, Bret Hart. <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm talking about in that era. If you do, let me know in the comments below if you remember this. But there was a time when Bret Hart, who was very much the uh, a good guy. I think the Hart Foundation started out as bad guys, though, as I recall. But anyway, he's, he was a good guy. And he was one of kind of the quintessential good guy. He wasn't kind of the big ham that Hulk Hogan was with the kind of red, white, and blue express. Or I guess that was Lex Luger. Uh, but he was, you know, he was a, he was a, he was the, uh, the, the good guy's good guy was Bret Hart. And then he did the heel turn with Steve Austin. And suddenly one of the things they started doing with Bret Hart is he came out and was like, 
I like Canada. America's stupid. And, you know, that it, it was very effective. It was, uh, <laughs> I mean, it got attention. And he would go to America and he would say these things. And then people would boo the shit out of him. And, uh, that, you know, there you go. It, it, that, that was, it was pretty simple te technique. Wrestling, in a lot of ways, is wonderful in its simplicity. You know, bad guy comes out. What town are we in? It smells like ass here. Oh, Indianapolis. Oh, fuck Indianapolis. I hear that, uh, you know, Indianapolis has a football team. That football team sucks. You know, or, you know, it's like when people would come to Seattle and do a wrestling show, then, you know, every now and then the bad guy would come out in a, uh, you know, San Francisco 49ers jersey. And Seattle being a pretty, you know, at the time, aggressive sports team for the Seahawks, that instantly people would start booing. They'd see that jersey, you're like, I know what I'm supposed to do now. Boo, 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 49ers. That, that's what that's what goes on. So when you're uh, Mark Brooks or Heather Antos or Vance Guyver or any of these people who, um, you know, you have your normal shit that you post, and every now and then you decide to go poke at somebody, yeah, it's going to get a reaction. If you walk out into the arena in a 49ers jersey in Seattle, people are going to start shitting on you. That's, that's how it works. And uh, sometimes some of those people who get angry and boo you are going to take it too far. And they're going to suggest violence. And that uh, doesn't make it right, but it shouldn't make it surprising. And that's, that's I think, the, the part that um, I think almost everybody is just over at this point. It's this uh, very tired song and dance of, like, uh, look at me. Look at, my, look at the attention I'm getting. Oh, my God, somebody is being mean to me. Like, come on. Come on, Brooks. You know you, you do you do that kind of shit, and uh, just just own it. Just be the heel. Um, I, I you know there was uh, Shawn Michaels, another wrestler, uh, was a heel for I don't know uh, half of his career, maybe a little bit more than that. Probably the more popular parts of his career, he was a heel, and he liked being a heel. Ric Flair, I think, liked being a heel. Now, Flair will tell you he's at one point that, you know, somebody threw a rock at his head and, you know, kind of cut it open because they were too into the fact that he was a bad guy. But, you know, he still loved being a heel. He loved the attention and he knew what he was getting. He, his goal was to rile up the crowd. And what you want to do is you want to rile them up a lot and then pull back just before they start to murder you. Which, you know, in, in uh, Paul Heyman's ECW, sometimes they didn't pull back. <laughs> Just, let's see what happens. But, uh, but that's, that's this kind of phony game of being a heel. I, I, was, str I was struck by this uh, CNN article. It, um, it's, it's amazing to, uh, to have these guys go, I never dreamed of a world where bad guys in pro wrestling might experience some crazy fans that tried to do dangerous thing on them. I, come on. <laughs> Listen to this. It goes, um, a man, they're talking about the escalation of violence. This is a quote I'll leave you with. On a recent night in Stickleyville, Virginia, where Trump's share of the vote rose from an already overwhelming 78% in 2016 to 84% in 2020, it did turn ugly and fast. As the progressive liberal tried to engage with people who'd paid to watch, he was drowned out by booze. A lot of that was expected. The Alex Adkins told CNN the progressive liberals' opinions would not go down well. A man with a Trump flag who didn't want to give his name said he wanted to see the progressive liberal. Are you ready for this? Beaten up. We love wrestling, first of all, he said as to why he was there. But to come and show the liberal like, hey, we know what we stand for. Yeah, and definitely not the left side. When some of the audience told their neighbors to let the progressive liberal speak, it boiled over. Punches were thrown. Someone was hit with a chair. Okay. Again, don't condone violence. But, uh, you know, what is it? The, this is at the intersection of fuck around and find out? Somewhere. Somewhere around in there. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Uh, we're, we've lost our common sense. There you go. Let me know if you uh, remember any of my crazy uh, ass old wrestling uh you know, wrestling analogies. Wasn't it easier when all we had to deal with was Katie Vick? Yeah, thanks for listening.